This program is brought to you by EcoBank, the Pan African Bank. Welcome to Africa's Next Generation, the groundbreaking series that uncovers inspiring journeys of Africa's emerging business leaders. I'm Esther Awoni. Many thanks for joining us. Now, in the first episode, we spoke about supporting and empowering women-led SMEs through digital inclusion. Now, the topic for today's discussion is digitizing the agricultural value chain for African SMEs. Now, today, my guests are Nana Araba Aben. She's a group executive consumer bank at EcoBank Transnational, who is here with me in the Lagos studio. Shane Ismail, Managing Director of Global Seeds Limited Malawi, who is joining us on Zoom, and Leslie Marange, founder of Zimbabwe's Glytam Foods, who is in our Johannesburg studio. Now, African farmers are faced by many challenges that can limit their production potential and the growth of their agricultural business. Now, one of these challenges is post-harvest losses. In our first case study today, we'll see what Zimbabwe's Glyton Foods is doing to support farmers in a community through the use of digital technologies. <laughs> The company has since assisted many communities to put food on the table, hence contributing to food security, empowered communities to access basic needs such as clothing and sending children to school through their fair and honest dealings with the communities. The company paid using commercially gazetted and socially accepted rates to the farmers. Well, look at what uh, Glytan Food is doing there in Zimbabwe, of course, to support uh, local farmers. I'd like to bring in uh, Leslie at this time. Uh, now, Leslie, uh, how can the digitization of the agricultural value chain positively impact growth on the African continent? Uh, thank you so much, Esther. Um, uh, I feel uh, after watching what we are doing with the communities, I felt a bit emotional. Um, but however, there is a lot that we need to do to uplift our own people uh, in the grassroots. Um, in terms of digitalization, yeah, you then see that we have managed to create a blockchain system. Uh, a blockchain system which can then help because ultimately the reason why most of our farmers are failing to sell the produce to the market is due to uh, their localities, infrastructural issues. Uh, they are very far away from the market. Um, the distribution network is very bad. Um, so, uh, and there is a problem, the honey industry mainly, uh, there's a problem of adulteration, uh, which is uh, people add corn syrup in the honey, people add water, people add sugar, which then also affects the real farmers who are doing the work. Uh, you know, so we've created what we call a blockchain system. A blockchain system uh, entails profiling each and every farmer uh, who is farming. So we create a profile for each and every farmer and every beehive is given a profile or is given a tag. And then this allows the honey to be traceable uh, using uh, a, 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 a barcode system when somebody uses uh, his, phone or his or her own a, a, a phone to scan uh, the bottle, uh, it then redirects you to where the honey has been sourced, how has it been transported, how has it been processed, and how has it been taken to the market. So there is that traceability of where the honey is coming from 
And it also allows, in terms of export, to creating an isotope. Because when it comes to honey, each and every area has got a different isotope because of the forage, the different forage, and because of the different uh, water which is available and the climate which is available. So it also also helps when you are trying to export the product. Uh, you create an isotope or a profile of that honey, and it becomes traceable. And the impact thereof of the people that you are trying to uh, assist can also be known by the person who is buying the product in the market. So I think this is how digitalization, and also in terms of tracking, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the trucks or the haulage trucks which then transport, you can actually know where the truck is, how it is moving until the product reaches to the processing plant and also when you take the product to the right. market. Well, I'm bringing in uh, Nana here now to, of course, uh, share perspective on funding. Nana, thank you for uh, being with us here today. Let's get right to it. Now, what can SMEs do in order to receive backing and funding opportunities from financial institutions? Great. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, uh, by the way, and thank you. Um, I think that um, um, there are a few points, uh, a number of points, but I'll just highlight a few. Okay. The first is that uh, you must be adequately prepared um, uh, for financing. And what do I mean by that? Um, put together a sound business plan. Um, you can receive training for that, but it's important to put forward a sound business plan. And you must also have a robust governance structure. Um, may, some SMEs may be um, uh, not a typical one-man shop. Uh, some of them are quite large, and you must have a strong uh, governance structure. Um, next, I would say is you must be committed to capacity building of your entire workforce. Um, there's a lot of innovation um, uh, in the agri uh, industry today. We need to make sure that um, um, as, 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 uh, as market participants, our workforce um, is well trained, uh, continuous training uh, to understand uh, um, uh, the, the changes in the industry and of course to drive efficiency. Um, you must also be able to demonstrate credit worthiness and I think that that's probably one of the weightiest uh, 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 matters. Uh, you must have financial records uh, that are traceable, that are uh, uh, you know, uh, credible. Um, you must uh, um, be able to demonstrate um, how you have managed uh, previous lending or previous credits. Um, you must also um, have collateral available depending on the sort of facility you may be looking for. And uh, the, the last point I'd like to pick up, which perhaps doesn't get enough attention, is ensuring regulatory compliance. So whether it's with a specific um, 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 uh, environmental policies, whether it is to do with uh, municipal uh, uh, you know, uh, regulations, whether it's to do with taxation. So uh, these are some of the areas that you know, one must look at as you come to a financial institution uh, for support. All right, thank you so much, Nana, for that. Let's quickly bring in uh, Leslie uh, to pick this, uh, continue this. Now, in what ways, Leslie, uh, does digital agro-processing assist in avoiding wastage, very important now, also post-harvest losses and malnutrition? Yeah, well, I think digitalization comes in a big way. Um, I'm, 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 I'm happy Nana has also alluded. Um, you know, I think it's also creating a track record. You'd look at us, most of um, African SME business people, uh, young as I am, uh, we struggle a lot with the issue of collateral. Uh, we struggle a lot with, uh, you know, collateralizing our businesses. But I think uh, this digital platform then creates what we call a financial track record. Uh, because, for example, um, I would want to just touch on the agricultural sector, right? Uh, when you digitalize your processes in the agricultural sector, uh, there is a lot of you know, traceability. It's, it's like you are taking the farm into the computer. So it's like your biostatistics now, you can actually know the kind of yield uh, that you have. You can actually know uh, the kind of problems that your farm is facing. You can actually know the kind of water that is required for the plant. You can actually know even the diseases that are yet to affect uh, your crops. So if you digitalize the agricultural value chain, it also helps in terms of consolidation of the business. Not just that, in terms of post-harvest losses, if you look at Africa uh, as a whole, we are losing 1.3 billion metric tons, which is 30 to 40 percent 
of our total output as a continent. And that 1.3 billion can actually feed about 1.6 billion people uh, in the continent. So we are losing a lot of food. Why? Because of post harvest losses. But if we then uh, um, factor in digitalized solutions of tracking our post harvest systems, how is our storage uh, being done? How uh, is our transportation being done? How are we taking the product into the market? Uh, how are we tracing the shelf life of the product? And what are the mechanisms that we are putting to try and you know, mitigate? Uh, uh, losses before they happen. It then assists across the value chain in terms of, you know, post harvest losses and it also helps because, I mean, look at the number of people that are malnourished. It's not because we are not producing enough, but it's because we are not utilizing enough of what we are using. Why? Because we do not have primary data which assist us to be traceable, to trace the value chains of what goes on in our farms, what goes on during distribution post harvest, what goes on when the product is on shelf, and what goes on when the consumer takes the product. So in a way, digitalization plays a very pivotal role in terms of consolidating the value chain. It also creates a business case, which we can also then use to our bankers like EcoBank for financing and things like that. Well, thank you so much, Leslie, for that. You made some very, very uh, important points there. Nana, let me bring you in. He made some very uh, incredible points. Traceability, taking yes. the farm to the computer, and of course, yes. reducing post-harvest losses. And you know, we uh -huh. talk a lot about food security, how we can, yes. you know, minimize uh, food wastage, post-harvest losses. So when you think about this, and you link that to how digitization can also help foster, boost food security, uh, what come, could you speak to that, but what comes to mind for you? Okay, so um, I think that uh, digitization, uh, certainly uh, from a financial service provider's perspective, um, it, it, it enables um, 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 access for players to a, a marketplace um, for their farming inputs and also, of course, um, sale of these uh, produce to, uh, 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 products to produce buying companies. So you can create a marketplace where um, SMEs, uh, farmers, uh, produce buyers, um, uh, input suppliers can actually um, engage um, that um, um, guarantees quality and also uh, secures a level of market and at an adequate price uh, where all players um, um, uh, believe that there's a, a level playing field. Um, additionally, um, such a marketplace uh, can give you, um, uh, oh, the, the, the farmers, access to information. Information on weather patterns, information on farming practices that improve efficiency, reduce wastage, um, um, training, um, which is part of the capacity building that I spoke to earlier. Um, um, such, such a platform uh, or digitizing uh, or creating digital platforms also gives access to tools for making payments and receiving payments. And that um, um, uh, addresses one of the points that uh, Leslie raised mm -hmm. about traceability of your cash flows. And on the back of that, of course, uh, players like um, um, EcoBank and others can actually look at that to see how can we support uh, these businesses uh, uh, financially. Um, I think that um, uh, all these make for um, uh, an operationally uh, uh, efficient um, ecosystem, uh, a robust uh, value chain, um, uh, agro value chain, and of course, um, it, it goes to, to reduce post harvest losses. It goes to uh, um, ensure that um, there is a, a constancy, as it were, in food supply. Well, thank you so much, Nana. We're going, we'll, let's uh, to pause there. I'll take mm -hmm. a break at, at this time. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back with more after this short commercial break. When we return, we'll meet and hear more from Shane Ismail of Global Seeds Malawi. Join us again. Welcome back. Now, before the break, we spoke to Nana Araba Aben, Group Executive Cons Consumer Banking at Echo Bank Transnational, and Leslie Marange, founder of Zimbabwe's Glytam Foods, about digitizing the agricultural value chain for African SMEs. Now, we're putting the spotlight on Malawi. 
Now, groundnut production is becoming increasingly important in the Malawian agricultural sector. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, the sector's gross production is valued at 362 million US dollars. Now, smallholder uh, households are constrained by poor access to improved seed varieties. Now, our case study today is Global Seeds, a 100% Malawian owned indigenous seed company that produces legume uh, seeds through contracting 750 small the farmers in cooperatives in the central and southern districts of the country. Now here large-scale growers uh, generally dominate cereal and production. Uh, let's watch this. Ndi kusi ani sewoni na kudi mumendi malima beu zinazi pindure ni nisi malidani sine malibeza koma ba mumendi amba kudi masiji eleven a indi tu olomoyang ugoni kudi ndika kulola dokumano kudi. Through the partnership with MICF, we have in, in place a system called Farm ERP. This is an online platform that lets us to track and know any information regarding our farmers as well as the seed they produce in real time. This information is uh, done on a tablet. Uh, that information is geotagged. And wh while I'm sitting in the office, I'm actually able to know uh, where the farmers are, how much they are expecting, how much they have produced, what actually diseases are in the field at any point in time. We're able to track using lot numbers, uh, which then allows us to know when the seed was processed, the quality parameters of that seed, and this allows us to give farmers a better quality product. But with this support, I think it has really helped us to, to, to de-risk investing into uh, CG9 and CG11, as well as to accelerate our investment in capital expenditures. I was talking about construction of a new warehouse, investing in equipment and seed quality testing. Joining us now on Zoom is Shane Ismail of Global Seeds Malawi. Shane, we just saw smallholder farmer Della Kachulu in the video telling us about how seed procured from the supply chain has changed her life. Now, how does digita digitization optimize Global Seeds uh, operation through its production, marketing and distribution of improved seeds? Thank you. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, digitization, we can't escape from it. Uh, global seeds, we are putting out seeds reaching to at least 120,000 farmers. And we're producing this seed using smallholder farmers, around 750 smallholder farmers. So there is a way uh, and a need for us to actually be able to trace uh, where each packet of seed has come from and which consumer it has gone to. So we are using an app called FarmERP that we've got specially customized for, for our company, which allows us in real time to track uh, all the farmers that are producing the seed for us. And when we test the seed for quality, uh, we're able to log in those quality parameters such as germination onto the app. And finally, when we aggregate all the seeds and process them at our factory, uh, we track them using a batch number. And now we are able to know where that seed has gone um, to all the way to the end consumer. We're also using a new technology called Gold Keys. So this is a traceability software which allows when farmers uh, buy our products to scratch the way you do with airtime and punch in a number to verify the authenticity of the seed, which actually also allows us as a company to know uh, where all those farmers who bought our seed are located. So uh, all that is really helping us as a company to, to know where our products are uh, where they came from through the entire value chain. Thank you. Great stuff. Now, now, now let me bring you in. Yes. Now, let's talk about Farm Pass and, of course, how it has digitized and simplified the agricultural uh, supply chain for SMEs. Okay. Um, so, um, essentially, uh, Farm Pass is um, an agriculture marketplace. Okay. And um, at this marketplace, you have players who are um, produced by companies. Um, farm input suppliers, mm -hmm. uh, you have financial service providers, uh, you have companies that provide uh, information on farming practices, 
on weather patterns. You have a number of players there. And um, this is essentially a one-stop shop for an SME uh, where they actually come and participate to ensure that um, they can get the information that they require to grow uh, their businesses sustainably. They are able to um, uh, purchase uh, supplies um, and also um, uh, meet with off-takers uh, to sell their goods. Um, from a financial services perspective, a huge advantage that FarmPass produces is that it creates a digital record of all your cash flows. Okay. And based on that, of course, we can then assess the financing needs um, of the SMEs and, and you know, provide suitable products, um, not just lending, um, support and working capital, but also insurance products. So it, it really is a great platform, uh, which uh, I believe uh, is uh, impactful. Um, you know, in, in, in the countries right. where it's offered, yes. A great stuff. Let me bring in uh, Leslie here. Now, Leslie, when digitizing the agricultural value chain, what are some positive results uh, on African SMEs? You made some very good uh, points earlier, but perhaps those uh, positives that stand out for you? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, digitalization of the value chain um, in a big way uh, allows you to create primary data uh, it allows you to create a track record. Uh, it allows you to create traceability. Uh, it allows you to mitigate post-harvest losses. It allows you to enhance your yield in the field. It also allows you to integrate with the market in an easy way. I think post-COVID, everyone would uh, admit that we were pushed as young people in Africa, we were pushed to take a leap further into the digitalization of the value chain so that the ease of doing business uh, and business can also continue happening. So I think digitalization in a way will save us um, a lot of money, will reduce a lot of wastage in a big way. And I think one of our key problems uh, in Africa for young people is unemployment. And through the digitalization of the agricultural value chain, there are a lot of jobs that then are created. And not just that, uh, we can also be masters of our own destiny, which is one thing that is important to play in that uh, space and to get the best out of it. So I think those are the most cardinal uh, aspects that I can allude to for, for now. Thank you so much, Lester. Let's bring in Shane now. Now, Shane, uh, considering uh, harsh climate conditions, namely Cyclone Freddy and the common impact of El Nino drought, uh, how can digitization assist with these uh, endemic issues within the agricultural sector? Yeah, indeed, uh, the, the devastation by uh, uh, floods, uh, cyclones is just, is just uh, too much. So as, uh, as an industry and as an input provider, um, we don't only look at floods, but looking at the entire climate change, there are also issues of droughts. We are putting out varieties that uh, actually deal with that in two ways. So there's drought tolerance, and these are varieties such as maize varieties that actually um, tolerate drought. They do well in drought, and also there's what we call drought escaping. So this would be ultra early maturing varieties that when you can focus when uh, perhaps flooding may occur, you can plant uh, uh, and then your crop matures right before the drought. So in essence, uh, as an industry, we, we, we think that the more information farmers have of these varieties, uh, then the better we can cope with climate change. So uh, digitization is actually helping for farmers to be able to access information regarding the varieties uh, that are suitable for their regions. Because uh, varieties or crop, crops are very specific to regions, they do best in certain areas than other areas. So digitization is, is working in to our advantage to, to allow us to, to, to give farmers the right information uh, regarding which products would do well in that particular region uh, in terms of climate change. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, let's bring, quickly bring in uh, Nana here. Nana, thank you so much for your time so far. Now, how can banks assist farmers to manage a food price volatility? Um, I think um, um, really um, the ability to connect uh, farmers uh, to off-takers, 
okay, uh, in a structured manner, and also uh, connect them to commodity exchanges. So, for example, uh, ZMX in Zimbabwe, um, um, the uh, uh, Nairobi uh, Coffee Exchange, uh, Ghana Commodity Exchange, all these exchanges, where at least um, uh, there, there is a, there's, there, uh, the SMEs are guaranteed a market mm -hmm. and, and also uh, uh, um, uh, some price security. Um, uh, we also provide uh, input uh, financing and um, um, also um, post-harvest financing, which I know that uh, Leslie spoke to earlier about the, 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 the loss that mm -hmm. we have, and uh, we look at how we can finance that to minimize losses, uh, whether it's by providing silos, threshes, and the like. Um, so these are some of the areas in which uh, I think uh, financial institutions in general, and certainly Ecobank, are able to, uh, uh, to assist in managing uh, price volatility. Thank you so much to uh, my guests and then of course in the studio and of course uh, uh, Shane. Of course, we've been looking at uh, we've been looking at uh, digitizing the agricultural value chain for African SMEs. Very important uh, if of course we're to take this uh, the agricultural SME value chain to the next level. Do join us uh, also uh, for the next episode in this series on Tuesday, the second of May. Now the show closes, of course, uh, on the second of May. We'd like to see you for the next one. For myself and the team, it's bye for now. This program is brought to you by EcoBank, the Pan-African Bank.